I'm super excited to announce a special collaboration with E8 and Dragon Age. When I first got their email, I was so hyped that I may have uh, confessed to having a bit of a parasocial relationship with one of their companions from their last game, Cullen. Anyway, it's now time to tell you that today I will be making one of the most beloved characters from the Dragon Age series, Lace Harding, but her new design featured in the Veilguard. Before we dive in, I just want to give a thank you to today's sponsor, which is EA and Dragon Age. Growing up, I loved the Dragon Age series, and so I'm really excited about their newest game, The Veilguard, and I think you guys will love it too. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the video. With three weeks to go, it's time to make a start on Lace Harding, starting with her blouse. I'm not very good with fabric names, so I first started by ordering two of these extra large shirts just because of the texture it has. As you can see, these are way too white, so I used this chemical, which is the same one they use in films to make the whites just a little bit duller so the cameras don't go weird with it, which when you dip it, turns completely purple, but it does turn back. As I was dyeing it, this random spider decided to crawl up my arm, which gave me the jump scare of my life. But as you can see, this is already starting to turn more brown. And I really went big for this just so I had enough fabric to craft into the actual shirt. So this is my mock-up. I, I really like how well it fits. Um, I've added this triangle piece, like in the reference, but I've actually made it a bit lower. This is just so that I give more of a shorter appearance, which is important because... Because Lace Harding is a dwarven scout, which means she's a lot shorter than I am. So now I can take it apart and use it as a pattern for the real thing. After sewing most of the garment pieces together, I decided to do a test for the embroidery that is found on her shirt. The tricky part was actually matching them together, since I couldn't do the entire thing on just one hoop. With the test piece, I found that it was a little blurry in areas, so when it came to the real thing, I completely changed the file so that it's a lot cleaner, which you can just about see here. Then I finished stitching the entire thing and overlocking the sides. This is the finished piece. Because the piece was still quite white, I decided to just weather it a bit. This just helped me visualise the end product, which looked a little more like this. It looks a lot more worn. And this is the embroidery all lined up. Next up was the chest piece, but I was so cold I wasn't ready for it. My workshop is so cold right now. However, with the help of my friend Trine, I was carefully wrapped up in some cling film, which isn't just a weird thing I wanted to do because I was cold. It's actually how most cosplayers make their templates, especially when it comes to chest plate armor. After I was wrapped in cling film, it was time to wrap me in duct tape. This is so I had something to draw on. Then with Trine's help, it was time to be cut free from this duct tape. Here I really begin just sketching out the overall shape and details. Then I can cut it out to make sure that it is the correct shape. After that, I just broke down the pattern so that it was flat and transferred it over to foam. Then I traced these pieces of foam with a seam allowance onto the fake leather. Now in true gremlin form, I refuse to use the table and rather just hobble around on the fabric. The darker foam that you saw me drawing on before was actually way too dense so I transferred it all over to this light grey foam. Then began tracing and cutting out all of these details, which I really love on this armour, I think it's so pretty, but when you have to hand pick all these things out without a laser cutter, you wonder if the detail was really worth it. <laughs> Just because I wanted it to be extra pretty, I top stitched around every single piece of detail, which took ages but I think it was totally worth it. Once all the pieces were stitched together I began gluing them together. This is extremely scary. I didn't want it to stick in the wrong place. You can see my little happy dance there as I start to see that my work was all worth it. <laughs> And I did some more top stitching for the details because why not, right? 
I didn't want to just paint the foam because I wanted it to match the overall look so I actually cut these out of the same black dense foam that I was using before and then I coated them with a stretchy gold fabric. With the chest complete but not weathered I thought it would be time to begin the gloves. Which I pre-bought some gloves, I added this extra rim around the back and then I painted it and added these extra details. So this is the glove without the details and then the one on the right is the one with the details. And after some weathering they really look handmade and well worn. Then it was time to begin the braces using the same fake leather fabric. These were particularly fun to make. I love it when you get to add real rivets. I thought they were so pretty that I actually weathered them pretty much straight away. Now begins the trousers. So I started out with these pre-bought brown trousers and my plan was to cut these shapes out, stitch them together to get this detail. However, when I tried them on, I really didn't like the look. And so it was time to start again. I found some very basic trouser pattern online. So as I'm cutting the pattern, I'm getting more and more concerned that I do not have enough fabric. This is the amount I have. But, obviously I didn't calculate this amount, this was just what I had left over because I wasn't originally planning to make these from scratch. So, let's see if I can make this work. As expected, the fabric was not enough for the pattern, so the only way I could make it work was to make the trousers shorter, which only just fit. Okay, so after committing all of the crimes, that you can commit for while sewing. I have managed to fit them all on, so hopefully these trousers aren't too short. Let's see. So as I'm remaking these trousers, I think this is a lot cleaner, and I'm really happy with this. This is originally what I hated on the other version of trousers. Um, so I'm gonna cut out that part, and then stitch a panel inside it. I don't really have to go to this level of effort, but in the reference, this doesn't have a seam here, so yeah, moment of truth. Okay, so now I have to cut this moment of truth. Just gotta do it. Well, there's no going back, guys. Let's see if I can make this work. I'm not sure if you can see here, but they did actually work. I was very happy, but yeah, the trousers were way too short. So I added these cuffs, which in the end I think looked okay. Okay, so now on to sewing the trousers. It's like I have to use this thick thread just to emphasize the handmade part to these trousers. And I have been secretly dreading them this whole project. But yeah, obviously it's like quite a strong fabric. And uh, as you can tell, it's really fun and I love it. And it's really fast. And just like that, it's super easy. And then you get like one whole stitch and probably about 8,000 more to go. But I can't be bothered to do it like that. So I think I'm going to burn some holes. It took me so long to measure out these holes that Kuma actually fell asleep on my back. You can find Lace Harding in the new Dragon Age game, The Veil God, as she returns to the series as a full-time companion. This game features a rich storyline that is impacted by the choices you make. It was actually this kind of storytelling from the previous game, Inquisition, that led me to grow so fond of the characters and the companions that I liked best. 
It isn't just the choices that you make that tell the story of this game, but also the vast lands that you explore. You can customise the combat to fit your playstyle with the diverse skill trees among three different classes, warrior, mage and rogue, and of course, the companions you choose to join you on your quests. If you'd like to hear more about the Veil Guard, please check the link in the description below. Then after burning the holes, this is actually how fast it was. They're finished! Woohoo! So after that huge success, it was time to make the leg armor, which again, I began wrapping my leg in cling film and then I used masking tape this time to draw the pattern. Just like the chest, I then transferred it over to a very thin foam. After gluing the pieces together, I did a quick test to make sure that it looked right and the movement was okay. After I was happy, I transferred it all over to fabric. Then on Harding's leg armor, she has these buttonholes. I believe they're buttonholes, they look like buttonholes. So I set my machine to a buttonhole and began stitching all of these tiny details. Of course, my overseer Kuma was very involved. After they were finished, it was time to add the rivets to the other details on the leg armor. And then the top details, which I just wrapped in the same trouser leg fabric. I love matching pieces together like this. And of course, more top stitching. However, at this point in the project, I was really enjoying top stitching. So this was a great treat. And as you can see, I think it was totally worth it. Again, just like the t-shirt, I decided to put a bit of like fake dirt weathering on the bottom. 3D modelled and printed these unique rivets that were found all over Harding's outfit and I just sprayed and then I rubbed on some gold wax paint. And once those were glued on it was time to make the waist shawl. That was a rather quick make, so I decided to move on to the waistcoat. This waistcoat is almost entirely hidden, however, I really wanted to give it every single detail it deserved, starting with these foam pauldron things. And then once I got their shape, I decided to move back onto the fabric side. However, this blue fabric was way too thin, so I actually backed them with this faux leather that I don't think I'll ever use otherwise. After more top stitching, to give it that handmade look. It was time to stitch the rest of this fabric together, starting with this Sherpa fabric lining. This stuff molted everywhere. <laughs> and with that finished, it was time to show you what Trine was getting up to whilst I was making all these pieces. As you can see, she started with a prototype pattern. And then she transferred that over to this woolen green fabric. Using acrylic paint, she changed the colour of this rope into a more earthy green colour to match the reference and began adding all these tiny details to the sleeves and the back. If you didn't already know, Trine is an amazing crafter and a great friend of mine, so I'll leave a link to her page in the description. we decided to try on all the pieces to make sure we were on the right track. Even though the cape wasn't finished and the pieces weren't weathered, I still felt pretty cool and I could really see that Harding was really coming to life. After a few fixes on the cape, it was time to weather it and add its final details. As Trim was doing that, I began to start the very detailed bag that Harding has. Using more faux leather, just like the chest piece, I began layering the details. I used this 3D puff paint to give these fake rivet looks, which I then just painted gold. I'm sure there's a much better way of doing this, but I really like this way because it was so fast and efficient. Now with all the pieces complete, it was time to weather each part in detail. Starting with the legs, I used this oil paint just to rub it into the cracks and I used some washes to create some water stains and the finished product looked like this, which I really feel like looks like it's been through a lot. Then I began weathering the chest piece, which I was so looking forward to, and I weathered it just by using an airbrush and some dry brushing. 
This is what it looked like at the end, which I think is so pretty, especially with the waist shawl. So I really wanted to mask off the other lighter fabric so that I could spray the whole thing a darker blue. I then weathered all the rest of the pieces, which I think completely transformed it. This is the finished weathered look that Shin did on the cape. And all its tiny details. All that was left was to create her bow and arrow, which I did by using 3D modeling and 3D printing and then paint. And finally, all the pieces are finished. Dragon Age The Veilguard and support my channel, please check the link in the description and I'll see you guys next month.